Back in January, you may recall that I was looking at official OpenSense hardware from Decisio. Specifically, this DEC 600 series. So this is actually a 675, uh, and it has four 1 gigabit network ports on it. The 677 is a slightly upgraded version. It's the same way, it's the same chassis, um, just a couple of board changes, and it supports 2.5 gigabit networking. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the DEC 677 from Decisio. Sheridan Computers, IT, Communications, Support. Let's take a quick look at the changes. So as you can see, uh, both come pre-installed with OpenSense. The license, both of them have the open source license plus one year free business edition when you purchase it. Both are rated for uh, both firewall routing and VPN. Now, Ethernet ports, the 675 has the four one gigabit network ports, as mentioned, and the 677 has four 2.5 gigabit network ports. They both have a single USB port. They both have a single console port. They both have the same internal storage, which is a 32 gigabyte solid state flash. They both have four gigabyte of memory. They both have four core CPUs. But the 677 has a slightly faster one at 1 1.8 as opposed to the uh, max frequency of 1.6 of the 675. Both of them support up to 4093 VLANs. Um, looking at system performance, the 675 has firewall throughput of 3300 megabits per second, and the 677 is faster with 5000 megabits per second. Uh, the firewall packets per second is 275k on the 675 and 420k on the 677 so port to port throughput um, obviously having one gigabit ports is 900 meg on the 675 we've got 2.3 gigabit per second on the 677 so a massive increase in speed there so firewall port to port packet per second 75,000 on the 675 and 195,000 uh, on the 677 so they both support 3 million concurrent sessions Firewall average latency is 200 microseconds on the 675 and 125 on the 677. So the recommended maximum firewall policies is both 10,000 on both these devices. IPsec VPN throughput on AES256 GM16 is both 600 megabit, megabits per second. Uh, high availability stay, I don't know why I left it in, obviously requires two devices for high availability. So the dimensions are identical because it's the same chassis. Uh, the form factor, they're both desktop, so they're not rack mountable, uh, unless you 3D print a rack mount for it. And they both weigh the same coming in at 0 0.56 kg. So power requirements are both 140 to 240 volts AC at 50 to 60 hertz. Uh, power consumption is 12 watts on the, roughly 12 watts on the 675 and 13 watts on the 677 so not a massive increase in difference for the 2.5 gigabit networking both have um the 675 has 41 btu an hour heat dissipation and 44 btu an hour on the 677 and the operating temperature is zero to plus 40 degrees celsius on both devices storage temperature is above minus 20 to plus 70 uh, and the humidity is 10 to 90% non-condensing on both of these. And under regulatory compliance, they're both the same with Part 15, Class A, and CE ROHS. Um, with the specs out of the way, let's unbox the 677 and take a look at it. So let's unbox it and see what we get. So the box is identical to the 675. Obviously, it's the same chassis. Um, again, we get instructions, um, default passwords. And all documentation. We've got the USB cable, um, power supply, and the UK power lead in my case. So if we take the chassis out of the box, so this is the 677. As you can see, it's identical to the 675 that I had. In fact, where is the 675? So this one is a 677. And this one is a 675. So you can see they are both in identical chassis. Um, so the only difference is mainly the slightly different board on this one. 
So, unfortunately, I can't take this apart. Just switch this back over. Yeah, so unfortunately, I can't take this one apart. If you recall from the last video, the um, warranty void if removed sticker is quite a pain to get off. Um, so the other thing to say, the console cable does come in the box. Um, and that's the console port, and that's the USB that you see there. So let's power it up and um, take a look at it. Okay, so um, according to the instructions, um, the LAN is on port zero. Oh. Plug that in. Um, and it's assigned with 192.168.1.1. And then the LAN is on port one. So as you can see, we've got that connected and plug the power in. And we're booting up. Uh, just while waiting for it to boot. So um, yeah, it's a standard open sense settings, 192.168.1.1. The DHCP range is on 192.168.1.100 to 1 1.99 at 199. Um, and then we've just got the instructions to log into the web interface, so root and open sense. And then it says, after you perform the basic setup, activate your open as a business edition license and update your system. The firmware module is located under system firmware and settings. So let's go ahead and do that. Just while we're waiting for, um, open sense to boot up, I say, I can't take this one apart because it's on loan from Cirrus IT services. If you want to know where to buy official OpenSense hardware, if you head over to Decisio.com, uh, I'll leave a link below. You can find the partners. So go on to Decisio's website, and if you go to Menu, then Where to Buy, um, and it brings up a map of all the places around the world where you can buy Decisio hardware. So this is official OpenSense hardware. Um, you can scroll in on the map, uh, or you can just select a country. So if we do United Kingdom, for example, um you can see there's two of us listed uh Cirrus it services sheridan computers so this unit is on loan to me it's from Cirrus it so i can't take it apart um but if you want to buy from the uk um then obviously you can use Cirrus it as well um right we're we booted up yet let me just take a quick look okay we have booted up so i'm going to log in with root and open sense i don't know if scott's actually uh configured this yet no okay so this one's on um freebsd 13.2 so we're going to need an update uh, and it's on OpenSense 24.4 so what we're going to do is as it said on the documentation go into system firmware uh updates and what i need to do is go into settings we're already on the business here so i'm just going to put the license in give me a second to do that all right, so I've put the uh, license in. So the license you just get on a piece of paper um, when you buy it with instructions. So once you've done that, we can now go ahead and update the business edition. So it says open sense business. Um, you can see this was last updated on Monday, April 29th, 2024. So let me go ahead and check for updates. Um, I haven't even done a setup at this stage. I've not gone through the setup wizard or anything. I've literally just plug the uh, LAN into port zero and the one into port one, as it said on the instructions. Um, so this business release is based on the OpenSense 24.4.2 business version with additional reliability and improvements. Here are the full patch notes. So system add snapshots, boot environment um, contributed by us. <laughs> so you do have snapshots in the business edition. System recover stuck monitors and offer a cron job. ISC DHCP allowed to disable DHCP version six. Uh, add close and exec flag to service lock file. Open VPN, add username field to the status page. Uh, WireGuard, add close and exec to service lock file. Um, the MBC improved container field cloning. A user interface allows style tag on headers. And the port's been updated. Uh, so we're going to do this now. Scroll down and click update so this will reboot so um i did expect this to be honest because it's i've had the system for a few months now um, and i've only just got around to do the video on it so let's do this update
so you'll notice um let's say this is an older system so under system we haven't got the snapshots feature in here and that will appear here after this update I'll also leave a link to, um, if you find the snapshots feature useful, um, I'll leave a link below where you can buy me a coffee for that. Um, there's a Tailscale plugin also that we developed, so feel free to go ahead and buy me a coffee. If not, it's at least worth um, liking the video and a subscription just for adding new features. That's the awesome thing about um, open source firewalls. If you want to add your own features to them, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and I know that NetBird's currently being worked on. So in addition to Tailscale, you should have the uh, NetBird plugin available soon as well. So you can see on this, we're updating PHP 8.2, Python 3.11. Just approaching the uh, final part here. I guess now it's doing the uh, package upgrades. Now it's fetching the uh, base operating system. So a critical upgrade is in process. Please do not turn off the system. Okay, we'll just wait for the system to reboot. Okay, we're back at the uh, login screen. So let's log back in again. Um, so now we're on 24.4.3. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back into system, uh, firmware, updates, so status, check for updates. So packages are up to date. So now we've got OpenSense 24.4. Savvy Shark has reached end of life. As such, it will not receive any more updates, uh, but the upgrade to the new 24.10 series is seamless and can be formed right here from the web interface. So let's go ahead and do that. So the firewall will download all firmware sets and reboot multiple times for this um, upgrade. All operating system files and packages will be reinstalled as a con consequence. So this may take a few minutes to complete. Um, now, one thing to note here is that the 675 and the 677 uh, use a type of EMMC, so um, this could well take a while. It's uh, obviously not an SSD and it's a bit slower. I'll let this update go um, and I'll come back when it's updated. All right, we're back in the uh, login screen. Um, so I actually gave up doing the updates. Um, hopefully you get an idea of how the updates work, but because it's on an EMMC, it was a bit slow and it was quicker to just download the 25.4.1 uh, image. Um, do it that way rather than keep waiting for various updates on a slow thing. Um, perfect. So no updates available on the selected mirror. We've got uh, the Open Central, Open, uh, Open Sense Central Management installed. Uh, and if we just double check, we've got to settings, miscellaneous. And we just want to make sure that you've got var log RAM disk. So use memory file system for var log. And we want to use memory file system for uh, forward slash temp. Uh, just to reduce the amount of writes that are going to the EMMC card on this. EMMC is a lot slower than SSD. So that update started taking quite a while. So I just did a fresh install on it. And the other thing that you can do to... Reduce the number of writes to an EMMC card is uh, we can disable uh, local login. We've got enabled for now, but if you disable that, then you can always enable remote login uh, as well. And that'll help you reduce the number of writes to the EMMC. With that, we're fully good. We're fully up to date. Um, so I hope this gives you some insight into the OpenSense Deck 677. Uh, it does have advantages over the 675. Obviously, the um, 2.5 gig network interfaces is definitely a welcome upgrade. So it does have an EMMC, but I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not playing with your firewall and it's for business use, um, an EMMC is absolutely fine. So this is a good little device. And you can see memory usage of a fresh install. We're at 15%, so we're using 600 meg out of 4 gig. Uh, and disk usage is only at 10% as well. So there's plenty of space on there for business systems. I am planning on doing some more videos on uh, some of the bigger the deck devices from Decisa. So these are the rack mount ones and they do have SSDs in them and they're a bit more beefier. So if you're interested in having a look at them, consider subscribing to the channel. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button. 
And that does help with the YouTube algorithm and suggesting it to your friends. Um, now, I did say during the update that snapshots are now uh, part of the business edition. They are. Um, but because this is installed on UFS, it's not recommended to install ZFS on an EMMC card. Um, so it's on UFS, so snapshots are only available when ZFS file system is used. So nice to see that error message is actually working. <laughs> um, with that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.